If you have a loud ticking sound on your E46 or your E39 era BMW, there's really only one ultimate solution for the problem. I'm gonna talk about it, we're gonna get into it, so stay tuned. So this is what's causing the loud ticking noise on your BMW. This is a hydraulic lifter. Its job is to take up the valve lash between the camshaft lobe and the tip of the valve. And it's hydraulically operated. The oil gets forced into this little hole right here and that pumps up the piston that's on the inside of here and that takes up the gap. And what happens is they, they you know, varnish builds up inside of them and they get pressed in and they get stuck in there. So now if they're stuck in, there's a gap, you know, it's gonna rattle around in there and that's the noise that you're hearing. And it won't go away until you've done a long freeway drive of about 10 to 15 minutes. Cause that, you know, at the higher engine speed that causes the oil pressure to be higher and that forces the thing open again and uh, makes the sound go away. That's what's happening on mine every now and then from a cold start, I'll get that loud ticking and it, again, it goes away eventually. So that's what I'm gonna solve in this video. And the only way to really solve it is to change them out. I did, you know, I did pull my old ones out when I did my rebuild and I pulled them apart and I tried to clean them as best I could, but it's still happening. So really the ultimate fix is to replace them. I bought a whole set of these. They weren't that expensive. I saw them on a deal. I've had them for a while. It's time to do this video. You know what I'm saying? I've done it in the past. I've done these, I've done the procedure in different videos, but you might not realize which videos you're supposed to stick together if you're kind of needing to do this. So I figured I might as well make one video with everything all self-contained. So that's what we're doing. So let's get started. So we've got to get all these components off. I normally would tell you to check out my common repair steps video, which I will if you want detailed procedures, but I will pull these off real quick for you. So if you're doing this, make sure you buy a new valve cover gasket because we do obviously have to take the valve cover off to do it. Mine is leaking, so I absolutely needed to get a new one. Oh, one of these fell off. Oh well, we'll find it later. Okay, more bolts. Might as well collect these, otherwise they will drop. These are non-standard bolts. You don't want to lose these. This one, I can feel it. This pulled the, the stud out from the head. So leave that one. This one I can see. There's one in the far corner there, which is always a pain. I'm going to use one of these little universal sockets. See how that goes. I got it. There's that little sucker. So this one, you don't want to break this because it's uh, sort of difficult to replace. Best way, you just got to get these clips spread apart on the sides a little bit. So just a little, I think this one's already off a little bit. It's just this one. There, that's all that needed. Okay, let's work on these in the center. You know, this thing makes an awful racket, doesn't it? It's a little better. start collecting our bolts. Make sure you stop, make sure you have them all. Um, I remember one was missing right here, so I already took it and it's over here. Keep them all grouped together, you know, keep all your bolts together. It's just the best way. Make sure you count, make sure you have them all. In particular, these long studs, they're just not easy to replace. You're gonna have to spend money to replace them. Coils out. The best coil design BMW ever had. I've never replaced these coils. We've got 200 and something, 215,000 miles on the car at this point. So pull out these um, harnesses for the oxygen sensors. Those are clipped to the valve cover. We don't want to take those with us. There's some wires pinned in with a little, with a little, um, metal clip in the back there. There's that last bolt. Now we still have washers and rubber grommets right here. You want the washers at the very least. 
The rubber grommets, they if they're stuck to the valve cover, you can leave them. They'll stay stuck. In my case, I'm just going to get off whatever I can. You want to make sure when you buy your valve cover gasket that it comes with these rubber grommets. Sometimes they're sold separately. It's a separate part number. If you got a good parts person who knows BMWs, they'll make sure you have what you need. One of them dropped. <laughs> that sucks. I'm going to have to go fishing for it. All right, I think that last one will probably stay. Ah, and I found my, I found that eight millimeter nut that I knew I forgot. So there you go. It's important to keep track. Okay, now we can get this off. It's kind of snapped in. Just pry it out. That'll come, you can set it aside over here. And now it's helpful to take off the battery cable. Do you need to unbolt the, uh, unplug the battery? No, not really because the power is here, not here. This is fine. No sparky sparky. So you put that over there. As long as you cover this, this terminal right here, you're safe. Protection for you. So you don't have to, but it's still, you know, a good habit to do it. Okay. Cables off, get the hard line out of the way. We should at this point have nothing connecting the valve cover or holding the valve cover on. So now we can pull it. So if you've never pulled your valve cover before, it's going to be really difficult to do. The thing will be kind of stuck on. One good place to pry is right in here in this little corner like that. In my case, it's been off numerous times, so it wasn't that bad. Grommet or uh, rubber gasket kind of stuck in the center here. That was holding me down a little bit, but boom, there we go. So if you <laughs> if you left all your bolts and everything like that, you don't want to turn the thing over because everything's going to drop. So <laughs> I, I notice I have a lot of RTV right in this area, and that must mean that is the stud that's stripped out. I knew I remembered there was one that was stripped out here. And I figured that's probably the cause of the oil leak that I was uh, that I noticed when I did that air conditioning compressor video last year. So I'm just going to turn this with it. Yeah, this is just spinning inside here. So this stud won't really bolt down anymore. And that's, you know, so the, the valve cover uh, is not really compressing down on the gasket there the way that it should. That's probably the source of the leak. So I will be rethreading this. Um, I'm going to I'm going to put a new I'm going to put a time cert in there. I have the kit I bought a long time ago, been meaning to do it in a video, so we will do it. And let's check if this one's good. This one is good. I will check the rest. I, for some reason, thought I had two of them and it might be this one and that's why that came out. So we'll see, I'll check the rest of them and just make sure they're good. And yeah, I probably won't do that in this video. I think maybe I'll just record a separate video on it because it might be cool for, uh, you know, for its own sake and um, might just get better, better search results that way, so. Um, yeah, I'll, that'll be the next video then. I forgot we do have to pull this guy off. It's just these little, little plastic uh, push rivet thingies. And there's one here that's missing. We're going to need to take the fan out as well. I have the electric fan. I've converted over to the electric fan. If you still, if you have an automatic transmission, which you likely do, you're going to need uh, fan clutch removal tools like this. You can get them on eBay. Um, just hook it down in there, spin the fan off. The fan is reverse threaded, so you turn it that way in order to loosen it. I've got a whole video on stuck fan clutch bolts and how to get those off, so I'll link to all that in the description, but I'm just gonna get this out real quick. So we got a 25 over here. Move this connector, remove that connector, squeeze it on both sides. And sometimes you might have a little black plastic rivet thing over here, pull it out the same as those two on the top. Look at that, look how easy the electric fan comes out. Love it. So now we gotta get um, this assembly off. This is the Vanos assembly. Got an 11 here with a 13 behind it. The rest are 10s. And in order to get this off, you're gonna need to take uh, this bolt and get it probably mostly loose. This is the top um, thermostat housing bolt. Let's get that all the way off then. So I'm gonna put, some, put a blue towel under here because this is gonna leak oil. And this is a 19. You might want to get some new crush washers for this right here. Looks like I've got copper ones on there, which means, yeah, I think I have a, a kit for this. 
it's they're supposed to be aluminum washers though so i will look to replace them it really doesn't matter they did their job just fine it's just um, you can't reuse copper washers they crush too easily not it will not be good to reuse them make sure you get that and keep them just in case okay now this will pivot and come out and now we can get at this one and now we can do all the rest however um I want to definitely take off these caps and then um, unbolt the thing from uh, the camshafts in the center first. I think it just seems a little easier now. <laughs> when you take these off, a lot of oil is going to leak. So be prepared with a couple of towels for this. These are eight. This is an eight millimeter Allen. And it's mostly going to be this lower one that's going to leak. So why don't we get the upper one out? I'm going to crack these first. Yeah, so that one doesn't leak that much. Yep, there's all the oil. Did I even get it all? I think I did not. <laughs> See, I didn't even listen to my own advice. No, I guess I, I kept it off the belt. That's mostly what I wanted to do. Um, there are these little, these little orange plugs that you gotta pull out. It's helpful to have these little angled needle nose because then you can get down in there. So I'm going to pull and get that out. It just is held on with a little O-ring, essentially easy to get out this one you can get with a normal needle nose because you got the access now we have access to the torx bolt that we need to get out yeah t30 and this one is reverse thread so set your thing to tighten and pull that bolt and don't lose that bolt it's an important bolt okay now the Vanos assembly is loose and will come away once we take the bolts out. Uh, let's unplug the sensor down here. Little bastard doesn't want to come out. Ah, there we go. There's a sensor back here that's connected. You also want to unplug it. That's this one up here. Easy enough. It's just, it's, it's located on these two little studs right here, these two little sleeves. So you're just going to work it off of those. Boom. There we go. Oh, did I miss a connector? I did, down here at the bottom. Two connectors, sensor, and then vano solenoid, and then vano solenoid over here. So, sorry, three connectors. The other sensor is screwed into the side of the, the uh, block there, the, the head. So I will put these little caps back on just, just to kind of contain the oil when I set this thing down. This is the gasket I was talking about. It's a good idea to get a new one of these. You'll notice that these wires are bare right here. The, the, the sleeve here has long since crumbled away. I actually have a replacement sleeve, the, the BMW original stuff. I, I did use the Harbor Freight stuff, but that stuff is crap. It just deteriorates very quickly. Um, but the BMW stuff does last a little while. I do have a length of it, and if I can find it, I'll replace this. Who knows, I might have reused this gasket once before. I don't think I've had this Vanos off since I rebuilt the engine, so I think this was original, but you, can't, you, you really shouldn't reuse these at all. You see there's a little, there's a line right here. That's the little stamped raised area that gets compressed once you use the gasket and it really is not gonna do as good a job um, if you reuse it. So get a new one. They're not that expensive. So yeah, I forgot to put the engine in time. That's a good thing to do before we take this thing off. So why don't we just quickly put it back on. This will just make it easy to do that. You could do it with, you know, when this thing is off. It's just that the, um, the little sleeves are gonna pop out and I don't necessarily want them to pop out right now. I mean, it's not going to matter. We're, we're taking the camshafts out anyway. We got to put everything back together anyway. So it wouldn't matter. You know, our timing is going to be off is what I'm saying. So it's not that big a deal, but I just don't want it to be off right now. I don't want them to pop out. I want the camshafts to turn over and all that stuff. So that'll hold it on. And this just is acting like a little barrier to prevent those things from popping out. Now we can spin the engine over all we want, go this way and that and it's not gonna be a big deal. Find top dead center. In order to do that, we should take the number one spark plug out. That's a 16 millimeter. My top dead center finder tool, little wooden dowel. Now, I'm gonna spin it over clockwise until that dowel crests over. See how it's popping up? Eventually it's gonna go back down. And that's right around Top dead center. Okay, we crest it over it. 
So I know somebody's going to be nervous about me having the spark plug out, so I will pop it back in. Just prevent something from falling down in the cylinder that way. It's a good thing to do. All right, we're going to go one side at a time. We'll keep the each side's components in a separate pile. This little spring here. There we go. Okay, now we just have the bolts that are actually holding the timing. Up to this point, we're still in time. You, ha you haven't done anything to ruin your time. You're not gonna need timing tools if you've gotten to this point. As long as these little cups don't pop out, your timing is still fine. But once we loosen all of these, these E8s, then our timing's off. Our timing is lost. There's a little pin that comes in the timing kit. We can press this thing down. There we go. That sort of keeps it in. And we can get this off. Oh. So this whole assembly will probably come off together. We'll take this off. We'll take that off. And there we go. So I'm going to take this ring out, put it over on this side and the chain and this thing I'll put on the other side. One more ring here with the cup. So now I'm going to take the secondary chain tensioner out. It makes it a little easier to get this sprocket out. In fact, necessary, I would say. So this chain tensioner is actually a 32 millimeter and I do have a 32 millimeter wrench. Um, if you don't have one, I think you can just use an adjustable wrench. I, I think I've probably used that every time I've done this and I might be busting it out in half a second. I think I just, all I really need to do is crack it loose. Yeah, now I can just spin it out with my hand. Pretty simple. Now there is a little washer that I think stuck to the side of the head. Make sure that you don't lose that. There we go. So make sure you don't lose that little aluminum washer. I think I should be able to get this sprocket off now. It's really just a question of, is there enough slack in the chain to get it off of the chain without taking this off? And I kind of don't want to go the route of taking that off because I would have to actually turn this camshaft around in order to get access to this one bolt that's under there in order to get this, this plastic spacer out. We could just leave it. It's not really a big deal. We'll take the camshaft out this way and just kind of leave that there. It should be fine. Or we can wait until we get this camshaft out. Uh, we can't really spin the camshaft. Well, I don't want to spin the camshaft because um, the, there's a chance the valves will hit the piston. So now we've come to the part of the job that I think scares most people, and that is removing the camshafts. You might've heard that these camshafts are hollow and they could crack if you remove them in the wrong way which is sort of true. I think it's much harder to crack these than you might think, but still we should follow the procedure. It all really comes down to which lobes are pressing down on the valves right now. In other words, which ones have the pressure on them. So you'll notice these ones are pointing upward. These ones are actually pointing off to the side. They haven't compressed the valve yet. There, there's no pressure there. These ones over here, they're up over here. They're fine. The ones in the back, they're up in the air. Number five is pressing down directly down on the valves right now. So those valves are open. And right here, number one, I can see when I look over on the end that it's just barely pressing, beginning to press down. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do is take my 24 millimeter wrench and just kind of turn the camshaft just a touch, just a touch, okay? And now these valves definitely, these lobes definitely aren't pressing down on the valves at all. It's really the only pressure is right here on number five. So I can remove all the bolts to all the rest of these. Actually, I'll do the ones in the front first. Do the ones here in the front, okay? And then I'm gonna leave the back three and I'll do those in a procedure. It's really all the pressure is being pressed down right here, but I will just do these carefully all together. That way, because what's gonna happen is if, is, um, if I remove all of these, these front and these ones, 
there still will be some sort of, you know, like it, it'll rock a little bit, I, you know, as we're sort of pulling these off. And I kind of just don't want it to do that. I want it to just come up evenly, just, just, you know, evenly all the way around. So I'll just do it in a little, in just little bits, okay, as I go there. You can do the whole thing in little bits if you want to, but there's really no need. It's really all the pressure is located back here. So we can kind of make the procedure go a little faster. Real quick, guys, I'm going to remove this thing just to kind of get it out of our way. You don't have to. This is just for filming's sake. Plus, I got to fix this bolt later, so it definitely has to be out of the way for me. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to get off all of the 11s. I'm not using this. Here's where I'm careful. Just crack it a little bit. And these are the two that have all the pressure on them. See what happens is as you as you release these these act as just sort of catches to prevent the camshaft from rocking up crazily. That's, that's my thinking. Seems to work pretty good. See now, you can see that the camshaft is raising when I get these loose. That's it. Are we? Yeah, we're done. So it would be ideal if I could get this this off and get the, the sprocket off. Just the, the cam will pop off a little easier that way. So I definitely want to get this off. Now I can turn this. It should be fine hopefully it'd be fine because this lobe is not pressing anything down. If I just turn this a little sideways, I should be able to align this such that I can get that bolt off, I think. Might. Actually, we might have to turn it so that this face is flat. So I guess we're just going to see where we land. It was starting to press number six down. That's the problem right there. And number six would be at top dead center. So what I'm going to do is Move the crank this way. Probably shouldn't have even put this thing in time to begin with. So there. So now I think we'll be able to. Yep. Okay, good. Now I can just get this out of here. Let's do that real quick. We should have just done that. There and then. This one here. The bolt needs to be out of there. It's really long. There we go. Okay, now we can take this all the way out or should be able to, I believe. All right, let's get this out. Take these off. Just remember the orientation of the numbers. There. Stupid cam out. I don't remember. Did I just take these bolts off? I guess maybe that's what I did. I didn't remember taking them off, but it's, it's real obvious to me now, five minutes later, that I should have just done that. And now, I don't think I really can do that because the cam is loose. Hopefully the impact will just do it. Yeah, it's fine now. Man, what a dummy. That's what you should do. <laughs> just take these stupid studs out. Uh, it's been a while since I did this. I just didn't remember. There. See, now it's loose. It was just this little 
this little collar right here that was making it hard to pivot the camshaft up and out. Yeah, just something stupid always. Okay, there we go. That's out. And this, don't worry about this falling and, and coming off of the chain down below there because there's a little ridge on the, the timing cover that prevents it from falling off of the, um, the, the sprocket on the, on the crankshaft. It will kind of fall down a little bit. You want to make sure you have a magnet to just help get it out from under there, if need be. So, why don't we take our cam out? So, all of these lifters are going to remain behind when we pull the bottom camshaft tray out, which is not going to matter because we're changing them. But if you want to keep them in place for any reason, use some little magnets to do that. Or you can sort of do this carefully and the lifter should sort of fall where they go. All right, all my old lifters. You see how they're all varnished up? Yeah. All right, as far as this camshaft goes, it was, I remember, over like this, where the number one was about to press on the, uh, the, the was about to press on the pistons or the valves, which means that it's this one that's pressing down. This is where all the pressure is um, when you're in like the top dead center configuration. If you decide not to put your engine into top dead center before you do anything, then your valve, you know, it doesn't, just, just figure out which one is pressing down and that's the one, that, that's the one that you do carefully along with the two on either side. That's, that's what you would do. It really doesn't matter which one. It's just all about where your, your camshaft is. So, but I'm putting it back where it was. So yeah, we're gonna repeat the procedure just as we did the first one. So it's um, these three that I'll do carefully. This one being the most important one. Okay. And I would even make sure that these back caps are completely loose or these other caps are loose. Very easy. And again, these ones being red from when you're standing over here and looking, looking at them, so they're not upside down. So that would be upside down. And again, you can tell because this one has a ridge on, on this end, that's the front cap, so that one can only go in one way. The rest of them should have the orientation of the writing in the same way. This one, they are located with these little sleeves here and one over there. And this one might be stuck on just a little bit. Pry it a little. That's all we needed. And we'll let these fall. Because it doesn't matter. There we go. All right, guys, that's the end of the disassembly procedure. <laughs> Obviously, take these three studs out before you uh, try to remove the camshaft. That'll just make it so much easier. But um, we got it out just the same. So yeah, uh, everything else is fine. And we would, be, we would normally be ready to put everything back together right now. However, I think I am going to take these camshafts and just all the other parts that are all varnished up, take them to my machine shop and get them cleaned. I don't know about this, the Vanos unit. Um, it's got some seals on the inside and I don't know if a cleaning procedure is going to affect that at all. I don't think it will maybe, but um, yeah, I, I might not get this clean just because of that. I gotta, I gotta think about it. Anyway, uh, that's gonna be done tomorrow and I'll get a new one of these gaskets tomorrow as well. And then we'll put it all back together. So here's the stud that goes right there. And you can see how it has, come on, focus. Okay, so you can see how it just pulled the aluminum threads out with it. There's like, you know, I can uncoil this probably or unscrew it, I would, I'm gonna have to scrape it off. But yeah, it just pulls out the, the, the threads. So um, I have a time cert kit and I mean, the wall is pretty smooth at this point. 
I'll drill it a little bit oversized, thread it, put a new steel insert in there, Loctite a new steel insert in there, and then that'll be that. So we'll do that in, a, in its own little video. Man, I bought the wrong freaking time cert. I forgot that these studs are bigger on this side that goes into the block than on this side. I bought the one for this side. <laughs> Uh, that'll get you, man. I just, I would not have remembered that little detail. Oh, well, I'll just get the right time cert kit. All right, I think I have to end the video here. I will get the right time cert kit. I will get these parts cleaned at the machine shop and we'll wrap it all up next week. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.